Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing well uh, and had a good weekend. It's uh, Martin Luther King Day here in the States and uh, we had a day off today <clears throat> and um, feeling a little bit sick today. I uh, got sick a few days ago, but um, just bear with me and uh, we're going to go ahead and do the weekly review and uh, since the markets were closed today, I'm going to be uploading this here shortly after I complete this video and um, let's go ahead and get right into it. So, as I said, uh, it is uh, Martin Luther King Day today in the States, and uh, the markets were closed today, so we didn't see much volatility, or as you, as much as volatility as we usually do in the U.S. session, and kind of in all the other sessions as well. They just, based off the U.S. session, uh, that there was going to be low volume, you know, it's kind of just, today it was kind of a slow day. So, um... We did have some moves today, mainly in the foreign ex foreign pairs, um, foreign currencies such as the euro, pound, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, because their markets were open. But um, like I said, I am going to be doing a weekly review, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So here's a DXY that we have here, and um, if you, I recommend everyone to watch my previous video. Um, it is uploaded uh, as Forex Monkeys uh, weekly analysis video for uh, I believe it was. Uh, whatever week it was last week, the week of the 14th, um, the week of the 13th. Um, so I urge you all to watch that so you guys can have a good idea of what to base. You know, if you have a good idea of previous week's price action, then you'll have a better idea of this week's price action. It's because it's just all piggybacking off each other as this trend has, short term trend has been continuing. Um, so on the dollar, on a weekly standpoint, um, we did see a weekly reversal candle, and then we did see a very momentum-filled uh, green candle this week. So, uh, as a result of that, um, we are, um, I mean, if I was just base my this week's price action off of last week's price action, I would say that I would expect the DXY to make continue to make um, pushes higher. Um, but, looking at the structure... Um, it does look like the XY is retracing fully. It has retraced fully back into the range, and um, this range, like I said, uh, it was a bearish range. It, it did we did break out of that range on the downside, and we are coming in to retest that range. But um, what I want you all to know is, in the longer term, uh, on the weekly, let's just see right here, um, this little channel that I have here, we did break out of that channel, and we did come in to retest that channel. And if we look at the dates that happened that we did have this bearish action uh the downward movements on the dxy it was the beginning of the year and um the first week of the year and then after that uh it did you know make that jump higher so does it tell you that the ending of the year and the very start of the year were fake moves um could they could have been very easily so we did come in here and retest so if i look at the daily time frame um if i just add in a little channel thing going on here so this is this just takes the average of uh, this whole entire um, price action range that we have here and uh, basically we did hit the bottom of the channel right so we hit the very bottom of the channel and that would have been a perfect bu great buy opportunity if you you know are a channel trader um, or you just saw that it was coming in on this support resistance right here um, that you we can extend from all the way over here right so um, DXY, I mean, currently the way it stands, I do think it's going to make s some pushes higher. Um, it may retrace a little bit before it goes higher, um, but um, I mean, the way I'm playing it right now is I'm just waiting to see how this currently holds, this current channel. And if we come down here at like 96.2 and start to hold, that, and and we you know make a push higher to make more highs, um, then I do I can see that you know it makes a little more of a pull higher, and. Um, uh, does does that but for that to happen it has to break 93.4 first uh, or 96.4 and um, I guess right now if you were trading the dollar on simply sub structure basis then this is a retest of the structure clearly and uh, it's a good um, risk to reward trade um, if you were to go on the short side um, let me add to that so on the short side if we were to short right here here's a little channel we got going on um, with all the current price action so we are at the top of the channel so we may expect on DXY is uh, retracement, and um, we can expect it to you know retrace back into these key support and re this key support and resistance area at like 95.8 ish. If it does choose to go down there, um, then I think that that could be a good, decent area to um, potentially uh, 
get on the long side as the longer time frame, the weekly time frame. Um, it does look like the dollar um, could continue to chug higher and uh, head back to, if it breaks out of this current range right here, then I would expect it to go back to 97.73-ish. Um, so it's just one, one support and resistance at a time, right? So the current way I'm playing this is I do see the momentum as being bullish and on the weekly time frame. So I'm going to wait for a correction on the four hour time frame and uh, to see if um, I can get an entry following that momentum higher. So that's my approach on DXY. If I look at Euro USD right here, basically here's a channel that we've been in since all of like last week since we made that high. Um, but what we see here is if we see that this move right here was like complete, you know, we didn't have lower lows, we had higher highs in this complete move. So if you look at that and if we just simply take our Fibonacci ratio from this low uh, and to that high, um, we are, you know, coming down to this red line, which is 89 Fibonacci, uh, if you can, or 86 Fibonacci, as you can see right there. And um, uh, from there, it, it, may pr it may present some long opportunities uh, like like the DXY said, um, or like I showed on the DXY, we are and that's we are retesting that, uh, you know, that breakout lower. So this is that breakout higher, as you see here. So from here, we we could we could definitely see a chance to go higher. Um, <clears throat> and uh, that that's that's where I'm going to be positioning myself in. I'm just going to be waiting for the trend channel to break out. And uh, if I look at the smaller time frame here on the 30 minute, uh, I would like some more, you know. I would like, I mean, first of all, we need to see a change in structure. So in order to see a change in structure, we need to see a break of these, this high right here, breakthrough, and then we need to see a retest of that. And that being that, that if that holds, then we could see it go higher, right? But if it doesn't hold, then, you know, we're, sh we're shit out of luck. So that's where we're at on DX or on the Euro. So if we see something like this, then uh, my target could be, or would be up, up here. So that's kind of what I'm looking at on the smaller time frame I guess like I said on the DXY uh, it, it is retesting this range so ideally if this range is bearish and if we were to fall out if we were to go back at the bottom of this channel um, that that would be my take profit area my my target would be the bottom of this channel right so if I if I extended this out all the way right see the bottom of the channel was like right here like in, you know by, by where my range is at and that also coincides with these trend lines and all this stuff. So that's where I would be taking profit. And from there, I may try to enter some longs on uh, DXY. Um, but it truly depends on the price action that we get there. So that's what I got on those two pairs. Um, looking at GBP USD, I'm, I wasn't really too big of a fan of this uh, pair. Um, but I, I mean, GBP is really bullish. And uh, I mean, it has been bullish for this last week right and we just having pin bar after pin bar um but we are we you know we are coming back in this range retest and we did have a uh, railroad track so we may we could head lower on this um but really I'm, I'm not trying to trade this this pair very much um if i do trade this pair then uh what, what i would be anticipating from this is so let me show you so what i what we have here i'm going to highlight some price targets so here okay so here's this gap right so here's this gap we had a gap from that price and we what we did was we went up in there and we hit that price and we fell so what happens is is if this as long as this price holds if we if we go up here and this price holds and we start to come back down from there then that, i mean that's my top that's my top end of the range right now so let me just let me just highlight that so that's my top end of the range right and my bottom end of the range would be this previous high that we broke out from, right? So over there, so which we kind of held so far. So that's my range right now. So what I'm the way I'm approaching this is, if it comes back down here, holds there, you know, does that thing, whatever, touches back down there, and comes starts to make some price action, uh, you know, some reversal price action, and if the EU starts to you know break out, if this re if this re comes down a little bit, retests while EU is breaking out. Then it'd be very. I mean, it'd be. It makes sense uh, if EU is breaking out and GU is. You know, it's got USD in it as well, and uh, GBP has been bullish so far. So um, that could be uh, something we could be on the lookout for. So what I mean by that is basically, um, here's. I mean, I'd say here's. Uh, 
here, okay, so from here you saw a clear like spike in GBPUSD. So what I would be looking for is I would be looking for a retracement back into there to that range. And um, let me let me delete some of this shit real quick. I'll make it cleaner for you guys. So what I'll be looking for is so here's the range, right? So that would be my range. So if I, if we come back in here and retest my range, and we hold, then I could be targeting uh, that upper range again. So first I'll be targeting this blue range, and then from there, if we do see some sort of you know retracement not to and but but holding of that structure i would target up there so that's my approach on gbp usd right now uh as long as the bullish structure remains um then that's how i'm going to be playing it obviously like i ain't trying to like um get on the opposite get on the wrong side of the train so on the weekly the momentum is still on the so okay that's interesting interesting uh, thing we should go over so on the weekly here, uh, this is last week's candle right there. So we did have like kind of like a doji candle where you know we went up, we went down, but we kind of closed higher than the week's open, but we couldn't really decide on where to exactly to go to, which makes sense because we were in a very important price point with this gap lower. So what I would think is I would expect it to you know continue consolidating for a little bit, and if it does, I mean as long as bullish structure holds, guys, there's really no reason for you to go bear like go on the short side so that's that's how your mentality should be the whole time as long as the structure is holding or unless you have some you know you're you're retesting some major structure on a longer time frame larger time frame sorry um so if i were to just simply do my thing oh here we go so there, here's a channel we're looking at. Geez, so if we come back down in here and hold that, then ideally, ultimately, if this, if we, if we end up breaking out of two nine seven, then I would be tar ultimately I'd be targeting uh, continuation of this channel. So what that means is my bullish targets. Um, if you look at my previous video, you'll see why I'm bullish on GBP and where I'm kind of targeting GBP to go to ultimately. But we'll see how that goes. So this is AUD USD. Um, clearly, we have a really garbage-looking range um, on the weekly time frame. We had this, you know, big red candle. So on, I mean, what I'm looking for is on the four-hour time frame to see some sort of breakout and retest of this. Okay, hold up. Let me let me go to the daily. Okay, there we go. So right now we're kind of facing some difficulties on going, making some upwards moves. But um, what I do see is a range right now and some bearish price action. So what I'm anticipating to happen is, you know, breakout lower. But we did have this really great, really big green candle higher, right? So and this and this large volume over here, right? So what what would be awesome is if this came and simply just was trying to do a retest. Um, then that would that would make sense as you know if it just comes back down in here somewhere i mean it doesn't have to be exactly to that spot and then continues to go higher uh that would make sense to me as we did have this pin bar and then move higher so we, we don't necessarily have to go that hard that far and we could go just fake out down below which is what my anticipation is fake out down below and then continue uh back continue higher definitely fake some people out uh the price point that i'd be exactly watching for is this high right here which would be at seven 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 zero seven 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 so let me get that line there there we go so that's what I got on AUD USD <clears throat> I mean as you see here we did have this downtrend and we did break out and what happened here was we retested with that big pin bar so I mean this is a really nice probability trade if I were to take uh, if I were to just throw my fibs on there and buy it on the retracement, I think that's a very high probability trade. Um, an update on last week's setup, uh, our two week setups. So basically what we're looking at on the weekly, uh, last week or two weeks ago, we were in buys, or we were waiting for the buy setup on Euro CHF. So what I mean by that is basically we were waiting for okay there we go so first off we were waiting for this blue channel to uh waiting for a breakout out of this blue channel right so once we got the breakout of this blue channel 
Uh, I was anticipating for that to happen. I kind of didn't get in that trade I was watching for. I think it was on Friday too, but didn't get in on that. So what I what I wanted to highlight was this retracement level where we broke out from previously, and uh, we break out and we come in and retest. So what what I was waiting for is I knew I did see this um, this this white channel here. So this is the longer term channel, and right. So what we did was we came in and uh, if I extend the line, see we came in and we kind of made a high we did break out of it showing that you know we were ready to go higher but what happens is when you go to try to break out um you'll come in and retest right like everything does you break out and you retest so what happened there uh was clearly a breakout and retest of this structure and uh what, what we did was we you know we identified the initial accumulation zone the breakout and the retest of this zone and basically where we're at right now is we are waiting for this larger range to break out where we made this high and we made this inter uh, intermediate term high so we're waiting for this to break out of here so but um you know we already got in our longs over here and we already you know this is our initial take profit area but on the longer time frame um i do see this going higher uh at least a little bit higher to 1.138 where uh, it is at the top of this top of the channel and from there we could uh, see some long-term trades long-term entries um, on the short side or we could see a continuation and breakout higher so we're looking at there either it goes there and you know continues to go lower after that or you know it, you get more of a breakout and um, it just keeps on chugging so makes makes uh, an effort to go back to these to the support resistance range so that's basically what we're looking at right now um, could be a very very lucrative setup here and it could take some time to set up as well so this is on the daily time frame um, I mean we're gonna want some sort of big big liquidity grab of, or like big 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 candles right uh, outside of this one point at, at this like 1.1 1. 1, 1, area because that's where we identify was our key zone right so right there I'm just gonna make a box there just so we remember and uh, see my chart real quick. So <clears throat> continuing on, GBPCHF. So what is this pair looking like? Basically, um, yesterday we or last week we got in longs. It's a beautiful trade. We got in longs, you know, right after we retested and boom, longs in right there. Just didn't see any uh, drawdowns, so that was good. But what are we doing this week? I am continuing to swing my longs, and also um, what I've identified is this key price point right here at this. 1.277 uh, mark so what we see here is we see the last point that we touched there was at that 1.17 mark and then here we had some support resist 1.277 sorry and then here we had a breakout uh, we struggled to break out and we broke out of there so that's a very important price range for me so um but what 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 that means is why is that important so when we came here into that 1.278 zone right we we just made a huge run higher so I mean it wasn't necessarily like really really big but I'd say like it was clearly over a hundred pips right so we made we made a hundred pips higher so that just goes to show that that if that if this was as bearish as everyone thought that price point would have clearly held because that was very important right um, so what we're looking at right now is that that price point is is very very important so why is that price point important because on the daily time frame we are in this larger channel here so right so we could be expecting some sort of large retracement from here some distribution going from here and trend continuation which is what we should be expecting right so until we uh this is a bullish structure that we're currently in right now but we're, i'm expecting this to go either range bound or um it to you know makes it's gonna it's gonna make some moves here as we have news coming up uh well G Theresa may spoke today at uh, 1 35 and then we have some gbp news coming in later but we still have this brexit news continuously bombarding everything so I'm not going to go into fundamentals here but what I'm just gonna go over is that this price this price support and resistance range we did break out we retested so as long as that's holding that's my uh, bottom end of the range and my top end of the range would obviously be that high right there and uh, if you were to just look at this channel right here if I were to just extend this lines then what we'd be expecting is you know a retracement back into here and continuation higher so that's kind of what we're looking at here and that, that kind of lines up with a gbp usd so i'm i'm just going for the simple way and just following trend until the trend line until this channel breaks and if this channel were to break 
then uh, my target would be to this lower channel here and that, that'd be down back in the support resistance range which would mean that we'd be making another lower low so uh, uh, we'll be making more lows into this and hanging and hang, falling back into the, below this 1.278 price range price point sorry <clears throat> GBP, uh, or euro GBP just an update from last week uh, we said it's gonna fall from here and fall it did so right now we're in a spot where we are retesting this big momentous breakout here um, so we could we would expect a retracement from here uh, it'd be nice if um, well yeah I mean it's it, it does look like a retracement is anticipated here but if we look at the one hour time frame um, what we'd want to see or what we'd have to see is so you have okay time out so you have this okay, this is our range right now so <clears throat> what we'd have to see is where's the trend line so we kind of fallen back into this trend line uh, it's, I mean this isn't the best setup here it's kind of actually really shitty but um, I'm just identifying that th this this could be a place where uh, Euro GBP retraces a little longer but uh, in order for that to happen, uh, it has to break out of this trend line and it has to break out of this uh, this high right here. So that's that's kind of the structure that we're in right now. This is this is how I look at it. So that's the range that we're in right now, and uh, it's got to do something to figure it out. Pick a side. So that's Euro GBP. I'm gonna go over Euro GBP NZD now. So GBP NZD, we had identified this channel and we came to the bottom of it held broke out nice and easy so i'm expecting a continuation of this one to go higher and um ultim ultimately what i want this to do is retest this uh i mean back in back in the ending of last year this thing would just fall every every single day so what i would expect this to do is to go i mean either it's going to retrace over here all the way fully or it's going to want to fully retrace and it's going to fall from there or it's going to break out of here and continue higher so i mean what i'm expecting this to do is go up a little more uh, and um i just wanted yeah I, I mean i do think this is going to go up a little more honestly so um it does have momentum to the upside so i'm not just making that uh prediction based off a whim but I'm just following the momentum, so that's that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to do right now is just follow the GBP NZD momentum to the upside, and swinging the long entries. Um, this week, here's your USD JPY. Uh, if I look at the weekly time frame, it does look very bullish. Um, nice momentum candle, just like the DXY and a bunch of other uh, yens. So what I'm anticipating on this is continuation of that bullish momentum obviously and uh, we did have this breakout of this um, trend line which I did identify in my last video when we retested and our setup was fantastic so we uh, were going to set up something like this so that was our trade so we were targeting up here so fantastic trade that we took and we hit take profit already so right now we're just hanging out uh, and just waiting for more dip opportunity buy opportunities on uh, this pair so this is a current channel um, that we're in right now and uh, this is you know on the short short time frame here's on the hourly right so um, what we're looking for on this pair is just see if this channel holds if it doesn't hold then we know what to do break and retest and wait f see if it uh, goes down to here which is what I'm look what I would where I would like to uh, enter more long-term buys at um, but if I were to extend this channel and make it more of this current range, so that's kind of what we're looking at right now. Um, we did hit the top end of that of that channel, so uh, yeah. So it does make sense for uh, this to potentially hold there and make make a move higher up here, or hold hold the middle end of the trend line and continue higher. Um, which is kind of generally how it works so once we break out to the middle half we're going to hover in the middle half for a little bit like we do here so we're hovering in the bottom half and then break out here and then we're retesting off the middle line then break out break down from the middle line and then retest the middle line a few times retest retest break out right so 
Um, that's kind of what we're looking at on UJ. <clears throat> um, last week I had a buy entry on CHF JPY. I did take profit. I did take partial profit, 30 pips um, at on Friday since it was a Friday trade setup. But looking at this pair, um, so this hasn't really broken out yet of that trend line that I was talking about that USD JPY has. Uh, it's continued to hold multiple times um, there, 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 and too many times, right? It's holding there too. So, I mean, as long as this is holding, it's still bearish momentum. So, um, I would see how this channel continues to play out and if it does hold this middle line middle middle angle of this channel and uh, decide that it wants to make make a move higher and break out of this channel then what I would be expecting is a dual like you know it's gonna be breaking out of both of this channel and that trend line it's gonna make a nice breakout and it's gonna offer a nice retrace as well so that's what I'm looking at um, on this if it were to break out um, then I would be targeting like a hundred two hundred pips on that easily so um, yeah, that's what I have on CHF, JPY, on, U on gold. Uh, if you look at my previous video, I don't know if I did it on the previous video, but um, for my students, we did go over this, and uh, I sent them this. So we've had three waves, three measured move waves. I just measured this first uh, up upswing, and then from there, from that high, and then, or actually just three even moves from that, uh, that high. So that's where we get this point right here, which is 1295.72, which is basically where we made the high at. And uh, what I was expecting is a breakdown of this trend line right here, and it clearly, you know, held that perfectly. And price action just couldn't make any higher highs here, and sellers just piled in and wash. We had a sell, and clearly fell nice and easy. So from here, um, you know, that was our setup above the high. And what we're going to be targeting, I mean, what we are targeting is, you know, 1260-ish. Um, but what we need for what we need to happen first is we need to break out of this current range. So this partial take profit at this range. So what we're going to be looking for right now is see if it does come in and does retrace back to this upper upper area and uh, fall back from there, fall down from there. Let's see. Let's see how. Let's see if that holds. So um, that could that could make sense. But what I would like for it to do if it comes in here, sneaks down, um, makes another low, and then comes up here, retraces just in time for. Uh, we have the news coming up. So today uh, it's tentative news. So JPY, meaning that's going to happen anytime today. It's probably going to happen um, here at like 3, 4 a.m. <clears throat> uh, U.S. Eastern time. But um, yeah, I'm not sure on that. So could happen as early as 10 p.m. or 1 p.m. Uh, latest around like 3, 4 a.m. is what I'm thinking. So we have that and then they have their press conference the next day and then we have CAD retail sales unemployment change and the main thing we have is Euro uh, ECB uh, press conference and refinancing rate so they're going to be going over their interest rate and the uh, yen is going to be doing their interest rate stuff too so that's what I'm looking for on the gold on the, you know smaller time frame taking a look at CAD CHF this is the potential area that we could uh, go short and why is that because so if we have this gap right here um, that we had you know we made a higher high and then since then it just kind of fell through so that's an important price point uh, and this is an important fake out that people got caught in here so uh, people, a lot of people got wrecked in there uh, condolences go out to them but uh, what I'm looking at here is basically let me see how this channel has been looking uh, so uh, we are in the bottom portion of this mid range so and we are in this key support resistance area so I am kind of feel I kind of feel like this is due to fall um, I mean that could be this could be a good area for um, taking shorts on uh, catch GHF or we could wait till uh, I mean so what, what I'm anticipating is this so here's that little support resistance that we broke out from right so if this goes down in the bottom of the range you know holds that and then it comes back up here and then it rejects this price or something and I'm I'm kind of waiting to see once we bounce, come in here and see how how we bounce. So my setup on this whole trade is you know if we do come down in here, I'm just gonna wait and see how price action holds there, and depending on that, I'll enter into a certain trade, right? And from there, if we do hold and make you know nice nice price action, nice you know nice candlesticks, nice uh, all that stuff, then I I mean we could see uh, it. it 
continue to chug higher right and uh go to the whole top of this move so like this whole move was fake like i said right so we could i mean it, it could essentially just go all the way to the top of that move and that could be very fine too and uh also what that would happen to coincide with is this long term uh is this very large tra channel that we have going on in here so that's a uh, cad chf and if we do end up break coming up up here and uh you know then we could go all the way back down to the bottom of this channel or we could break out and you know go for 1.77 and just continue to chug higher so <clears throat> in in addition to that that's where we have usd cad come in so i'm expecting usd cad to rise up a little bit with the dollars as the dollar has been strong and what we see here and i'm just going to go over the structure clearly that's all let the structure speak for itself we are breaking out right now and um I am anticipating it to go a little higher and uh, ultimately I would like this to retrace nice and fat so uh, it's like the cat is retracing right now this is retracing right now too so depending on I mean I'm not sure how much this is gonna run but I do see that it it is trying to shift the structure and go uh, go higher um, if I were to just mark out this range and then just one second Draw it out, right? So there's one, two. So okay, let me do that a little better. So what am I doing here? Is I'm just highlighting this range, right? So what I would see is I wouldn't count that little wick higher. I would just say like the meat of the range. Um, that's the meat of the range in my in my opinion. So what I'm doing is I'm just calculating that meat of the range and just seeing where we. And just putting stacking them on top of each other just to see how many times so just this is like a calculated target so right so how the markets work is that once you have a range it's gonna move by that range so like in that amount of pips so why do ranges like most ranges are a certain size right i mean that matters right so this this range is that big and, and this range is this big all because of a reason right so <clears throat> the reason is that when these ranges happen um and however long the ranges are and however long the consolidation happens it, it, it it's like that's how long the thing is fueling up the pair is fueling up and that's how kind of uh when it breaks out that's a target that we could have for it um and that's how you should think about that so there's uh you know we hit the first target here we you know wick to it retrace and we're still holding this bottom bottom portion right so that means the structure is still intact so if we do break out of this current high that we have here then my target, my target would would make sense if it would be at the top of this box again, right? It's because I'm just taking these ranges and taking it, playing them out. So that's that range. This is this range, right? Let me just uh, make it a little. And here's this one. So that's UCAD, and uh, here's oil for you. Um, oil looks like it is in an area where it is ripe to retrace um, so on oil I would like for it to I mean we're in this lower midline right so the momentum is already slowing down while we're rising up so at this at this stage I'm expect I'm waiting for this 54.6 price point to hold in that middle line so if both of those hold then I would be I could I would be taking it lower I'd be safe to enter some shorts and why would I enter shorts? Because, you know, we have this support and resistance right there, right? So I could take it off that support and resistance and target. Um, my target would be around 50 initially. Uh, my initial target would be 52 point, uh, 53 actually would be my initial target. Back in a retrace into there and at the bottom of this channel, right? And then from there, I think if we get some sort of retracement, um, and uh, then I would be comfortable with uh, c continuing to, to position myself in, in the down, downside range and my next target would be 50 and so on and so forth and then from there ultimately I want to enter longs on oil so if we do get back down there and uh, I would like to I would like to see how the price action is on the retracement and uh, ultimately I would like to buy at like 48 um, <clears throat> but 49 48 to 50 I guess is kind of my range where I would like to pre-purchase and uh, see where see how that works out so so on SPX, it's S and P 500. So here's our channel. We are at the top of the channel. It is safe to short at the top end of the range, like it makes sense to. And uh, we are at this. Uh, if you see this trend line, this red trend line here, 
connecting these two lows we broke out of before we are back at that so what I'm expecting is a retracement um, back into you know or some sort of retracement I guess like back to 2600 that would make sense but um, if we yeah I mean I guess like I'm not really gonna be trading this very closely because on the short side because the momentum has been to the upside so I'm just gonna be waiting to see how it retraces and from there um, wait and see if buys do set up eventually so or if they do set up ever um, like long term so if we do break out of the channel then that's a long term setup to 2877 but right now I'm just waiting for a retracement see how it holds ultimately I'd like to buy at 2524 but we have to see how this BOJ news goes and how the ECB news goes and all this stuff so and remember uh, you can check all that out at Forex Factory um, thank you very much for watching everyone my name is Forex Monkey and have a fantastic week ahead of you and uh, always use proper risk management and I just want to remind you guys that this is not financial advice I'm just a guy talking to you all about the charts and what I see and how I'm going to be approaching them please always consult a financial advisor before entering any positions and always use risk management so with that being said thank you very much for watching please consult with a financial advisor I'm not a financial advisor everything you do is at your own discretion thank you very much and have a good day everyone thank you for watching please like comment and share